I don't think the mics are moving. I see a red light. Yeah. Well, great mic. Well, I'm pushing in. That was Bill doesn't have a microphone. Bill doesn't need one. Bill. I know you don't need one, but maybe for the YouTube thing, you might. Need one. <laughs> This is the same. Mine's working. This one's not. Well, that one's working. Okay, let me get this one. I don't need one. Oh, they don't feel like. Oh, that's a might be me by the end of the night. So this isn't your regular gavel. You never use the gavel. I know he brings it. Doesn't he usually bring it in there for us? Uh -huh. Never. There's never someone to. You want to use it? Yeah. <laughs> I'll give it to me. I'll use it to somebody. Hit somebody. No, you are not allowed to <laughs> Okay, we will bring to order our February 22nd. 2022 meeting for those who don't realize today is a palindrome and unfortunately you're here with us and not at the courthouse getting married on this lucky day it's national margarita day too by yeah way. so <laughs> we'll get you out of here early enough so you can participate in the festivities of the day Gordon. um we have some preliminary matters to go through um but first let me um, if you have not been here before, we hear two types of cases. We hear appeals and we hear variance requests um, for the appeal, just the applicant and the city enforcement officer speaking. On our variance request, we open those up to neighbors or other interested parties to speak for or against the proposal. We ask that you um, Limit your comments to relevancy to the issues that are they're being asked to bear to go a variance for. Um, when you come up to speak, there is a sign in sheet at the table. If you can print your name legibly, that helps our court reporter know who was speaking and how to spell your name. And if you plan on speaking, when you come to the front, I will ask you to state your name and whether or not you've been sworn in. And so to save time on that, I will swear everybody in as a group if you think that you're planning to speak tonight. So if you would raise your right hand, you promise that the testimony you give tonight will be the truth and nothing but the truth. Please state I do. Thank you. Okay, we'll hear the city's preliminary matters first, and then we'll get down to business. Okay, Madam Chair, we'll start with tabling. I do have one note because we have three board members present. That is a quorum, and you need a quorum for approvals. So that means you need three approvals from our members. If you don't think that you can get three approvals from them, you can either table now or uh, we can present your case and you, after discussion with the members, if you don't think things are going to go your way, you can uh, you can table at that point. So we do have one tabling request at the beginning. It's BDA 21-124. That's 2875 East Livingston Avenue. After that, if anyone else wants to table, we'll bring it forward. Will the applicant for 2875 East Livingston come forward? 
Please state your name, whether you've been sworn in. Cody Free. Uh, yes, I've been sworn in. Is that my one? Is the green light? Yeah, green light's on. Okay. Just got to speak. Get a little closer yeah. to me. Cody Free. Uh, yeah, I've been sworn in. Okay. Go ahead and state your request. Um, we are requesting to table this one. Uh, we had a meeting with the Area Commission. Uh, there's one member from the Berwick uh, Commission that they wanted to meet separately. So we couldn't get a final vote from the area commission. So we're requesting to table this next one also. Move the table. Second. Okay. We have is there anybody here that wants to speak about the tabling of this? Okay. Correction. Please call on. Mr. Malika. Yes. Mr. Tamara. Yes. Chair Palmer Bailey. Yes. Dance is tabled. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there anyone else that would like to table? And this one is BZH 1-085, number 12. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just got a table. You, you were like, you don't have to stay with us in the meeting. Okay. okay. Okay, state your name and whether you've been sworn. Hi, I've been sworn in. My name is Ryan Mainwaring. Okay, go ahead and state your request. Welcome to the table this application, uh, the variance request to the uh, Black Committee members today. So I can't hear you. Sorry, sir. Black Committee members. All Black Committee, okay. Um, I'm trying to find you are who? Ryan, Ryan Mainwaring. To represent who? Uh, BRE Holdings. Okay. BSH, whatever that is. Yeah, okay. Uh, first, is anybody here that wishes to speak against us tabling this? Yeah, what did I, say? What if yeah. I don't want to table it. If I don't want yeah, I was going to say. Um, so there's people that are raising their hands. Please come forward. So, um, one person at a time, to speak, but you all can come forward to the chairs. That's sure. fine. But I'll just have one person. You can sit at the chair right here, ma'am. Bring the mic a little bit closer to you. Okay. Okay, state your name, whether or not you've been sworn. Uh, my name is Melissa Tompkins. I think you got to get the mic really close. My name is Melissa Tompkins. Okay. okay. State your objection to the table. Uh, so I am vice chair of the Metropolitan Area Commission. And so each of the commissioners here are representing portions of the community in this. We have had two meetings. Where we tried to have conversations with the owners of this property about our concerns. Um, twice they have not shown up, and yet they're still trying to press us through. And so that's why we would like to just proceed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Did you sign the um, sheet, ma'am? Madam Chair, I'm not going to vote to table this. If I don't vote to table it, it can't be tabled. So we don't, we don't, we don't have to talk to the rest of these people because I'm not going to vote to table it. Okay. Well, you can have a seat, and we will proceed forward with your case, sir. You will, um, audience members, I will ask for people to speak once he presents his case. So you will have a chance to speak to the actual variance requests once I do that. So you can prepare your thoughts and comments for that. I guess we could have an actual vote. I was just failing them. Okay. <laughs> we should. Well, we didn't have a motion. Well, yeah, but so is there a motion in favor? But no one makes a motion. I don't know. I was gonna yeah, say is there a motion to table? Okay. I guess it's tabled by. Okay, we didn't have nobody motion. Yeah. So there's no motion. No motion. No motion. Okay, so this will be item number 12. Oh, yeah, so you're not up yet. Does anybody else wish to table today? 
have uh, we have or we had two appeals. Um, one is asking for a continuance. Oh, never mind. We'll do an extension real quick. So the extension for you to look at. Uh, Chair, uh, we have a extension at 234 East Woodrow Avenue. This is BZA 21009. Just briefly, uh, this was approved in March 2021. The applicant is here to seek additional. Okay. Please state your name and what you've been sworn in. This is Nick Bowen. I've been sworn in. Okay. Go ahead with the request. Yes, I'm respectfully requesting an extension on the outstanding benefits that I have. For 234 East Woodrow for additional time for optimizing design and building plans and building materials for um, the property. How much time? Two years. What was the what was the Have we given more than a year before extension? I okay, that's what I was. Uh, I'm not comfortable going more than a year. Yeah, I think we've. What, why? Why do you not need? Why do you need more than a year? Well, I need the time for the design and so process of construction. I'm assuming this. Is so well, you don't have to complete it within the time frame of the You just have to get started on it by that time. So you will have to start it on it in another year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that you would need affirmative action. That could be, you know, submitting a permit. That could be hiring a consultant. It could be a number of things that qualify as affirmative action to start. Yeah. I'm going to continue for one year. Second. Please call roll. Mr. Warren? Yes. Mr. Marika? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. Since you granted. Thank you. Is there a way to turn the volume up? Thank you. Yeah, you are. It'll allow us to press the crash. Thank you. Our mics are working very good, and that one isn't. Do you think it's blank? I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out what it is. Okay. Um, you said that you had some preliminary. We, we have two appeals or had two appeals. Um, appeal number one uh, requests a continuance uh, uh, because they did not receive notice. As we don't have a manager, we don't have a full board meeting, we don't have a city attorney present. Um, I would advise uh, <laughs> that we grant the continuance. Okay. Um, is this code enforcement here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, Margaret Lafferty, I've been sworn in. Good evening, board. Um, spoke earlier with Mr. Merritt in regards to this property. Um, and we're in complete acceptance of just pushing this till the next one so that uh, proper service can be handled and, and the right parties can be here. Okay. Um, this sounds like it might resolve itself, but yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we need to vote on that? Yeah. Okay. The applicant to work with it. Uh, the applicant didn't get yeah. notice. So. So we need a motion. I move to postpone until next month. Second. Please call the roll. Uh, Mr. Malika. Yes. Mr. DeMorn. Yes. Chair Palmer Bailey. Yes. Extended. And appeal two, um, I guess I don't think we can even vote on because the appellant has passed away. That code action um, basically disappears. If you'd like to explain. <laughs> Um, for this one, code enforcement received an email actually yesterday um, with the unfortunate news of the passing of the appellant. Um, therefore, our code orders, which are issued to in the appellant's name, obviously can't be heard tonight, and they are also addressed to to the the passage person that passed over the weekend. So, um, at this point, code enforcement will be canceling those orders, but addressing it with a family member that it's going to be taking. Or hoping to be taking some sort of responsibility. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, are you withdraw? Is that a withdrawal? I, I would assume we would have to withdraw on our on our standpoint. Okay. Is there a motion? Motion to withdraw. Second. 
Yes. Yes. Chair Pollard. Yes. Thank you. Got to me. You too. Okay. With that, we will proceed with our variance request. Case number one is 1055 West Fifth Avenue. You can sign your name on the sheet. Hello, I'm Bart Overly, and I've been sworn. Okay, I'll hear from the city charts, and we'll come back to you. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is BZA 21-151 at 1055 West Fifth Avenue, located on the south side of West Fifth Avenue, approximately 65 feet east of Oxley Road. And this is within the 5th by Northwest Ferry Commission, so in the Manufacturing District. The 0.6 acre site is developed with a mixed use building within the, fifth, the West Fifth Avenue Urban Commercial Overlay. The UCO grants a 25% parking reduction to all of the proposed uses on the site and an additional 25% parking redu reduction on the existing retail use. Surrounding the site are predominantly commercial and manufacturing uses along the West Fifth Avenue corridor. The applicant proposes to occupy a portion of the building with a veterinary clinic. A variance is requested to accommodate the parking requirement for the conversion, thus reducing the minimum number of parking spaces from 28 to 15. Planning is in full support of this proposal. Planning notes that access to transit, pedestrian facilities, and mixed use development pattern of the area, and the proposed shared parking agreement, which aligns with City of Columbus planning policies recommendations. Production request. That also requests uh, bicycle parking beyond what is required by code to align with C2G2 design guidelines and also encourage landscaping along the West Fifth Avenue frontage to screen the parking from the right of way and align with C2G2 design guidelines. The revised site plan that you see in front of you um, adequately addresses all of these requests. The Department of Public Service supports the request and variance to reduce the minimum required number of parking spaces as this request does not meet the criteria for a parking study to be required for the department's parking variance review guidelines. The 5th by Northwest Area Commission recommended approval of this request. And city departments can also recommend approval of the proposal as the proposed variances are compatible with the surrounding neighborhood and the Division of Traffic Management has no issues. And we would request a condition that the applicant commit to the landscaping and bicycle parking on site plan. Okay. Does the applicant commit to those two things from the city? We do. Okay. Do you have anything else to do about this project? Um, nothing except to say that uh, when we had our discussion with Fifth by Northwest, um, one of the uh, we obviously have this parking agreement with the next door neighbor um, and uh, the hours of operation are kind of off cycle. So they're going to be operating 3 to 11 with a relatively small staff of four people. And I think that's why Fifth by Northwest felt that this was a, a good use for that property. Answer any questions yet? So how many spots are there now? There are just a 15 spot to 15 on site. There are actually two that are on site and off site. They're part of a, a rear easement area, and we don't count those, uh, but 15 officially. And then how many spots are around the corner? 15. Another 15? Yeah, so we're at 30 and we need 28. I mean, you don't see this business as, I mean, people are in and out, but not. Coming and staying, parking and staying. No, they're they're doing the vet. Yeah, it's a it's a veteran, and it's it's a scheduled veterinary practice. So it's they're they're able to anticipate the numbers of people that will be there at a given time. Mm -hmm. Is anybody here that wants to speak about this project? And seeing none, do we have any more questions? No. Ready to call the question? I'll call the question. Question has been called. Please call the roll. Mr. Demora. Yes. Mr. Blecka. Yes. Mayor Homer Bailey. Yes, this is granted. Good luck projects. Thank you. 7700 Crosswoods Drive.
7700 Crosswoods Drive is located on the northeast side of Crosswoods Drive, approximately 640 feet north of East Kansas Street Boulevard, served by the Far Northwest, sorry, Far North Columbus Communities Coalition, is known as CQD. The two acre site is developed with a 9,363 square foot religious facility. Um, <laughs> Um, religious facility and associated 100 parking spaces. Surrounding uses include single unit dwelling to the north and office building to the southwest, east, and south. The applicant proposes to remove 23 parking spaces, construct a 9,891 square foot assembly expansion onto the east side of the building, and to convert the existing space to non assembly The variance is to reduce the minimum number of required parking spaces from 368 to 77. You heard this case um, a couple of months ago. They were here. They came back with uh, more details on parking agreements. I'll just continue that. The Far North Area Plan states that the redevelopment of existing institutional land uses should be compatible with surrounding development. Planning division is supportive of the parking reduction as the development is located in an area with a mix of uses with ample surface parking off site, and the applicant is providing on site bicycle parking beyond that required by code, which helps offset the parking reduction. Staff support the conceptual elevations as consistent with plan design guidelines. Staff request fruit trees along Crosswoods Drive. Frontage to align with the far north area plan special focus on landscaping, screening, and buffering to improve the image and quality of life of the area. Staff note the existing neighboring parking agreements and continue to encourage such agreements to accommodate overflow parking if needed to align with the area plan recommendation that expanded uses should provide adequate parking. Parking study exemption has been approved by parking services and they support the variances. The division states there is ample nearby off street parking that has complementary demands rather than competitive demands and no on street parking that could be negatively impacted. And the far north uh, on this community's coalition recommended approval. City departments recommend conditional approval as this is consistent with the Far North Area Plan, which recommends compatibility with surrounding development and adequate parking for expanded uses. The conceptual elevations are consistent with design guidelines.
RP they've been using wires. Uh, and I just want to stress one of the things that Phil said in the report is that um, the plan, the traffic department noted that we have complementary uh, parking demand, which means it's exactly opposite of what our neighbors are using. As you can see, this is probably taken on a weekday. So, um, you know, they have, they have parking there and we have zero parking and it's, it would be the exact opposite on the weekend. So this Christopher Woods neighborhood is, I'm, I'm assuming that's the neighborhood that's above. That's correct. But is there a pathway from that neighborhood to your church? Uh, they technically no. Um, they believe that uh, that there works. It would it would have been possible, but by with this agreement, we're definitely not going to be have any parking there. We have community li liaisons um, between the two parties. And then also the, the agreement um, also goes towards the development, um, if, if this were to be approved, such as construction hours, respecting the, uh, uh, the perimeter boundary, improving the buffer, stuff like that. Yeah, my memory was that the, my big concern last time was the neighbors, because I felt there was enough parking in the general area, mm -hmm. and there's a uh, sea of parking, and especially it would be used during, you know, especially if their hours are during, their hours are during the weekend or Sunday specifically. And most of the time, I would think those lots would be fairly empty. But again, the neighbors came up fairly strongly last time and were concerned about a serious thing. So again, if I'm, my feeling is if the neighbors are happy, we should. Is there anybody here to speak about this application? <laughs> okay, do we have any other questions for the applicant? Call the question. Questions been called. Please call the roll. With the condition. With the condition. Oh, with the condition. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. so the conditions will be provide 10 bicycle parking spaces and street trees along Crosswoods Drive in consultation with the city of Morse. Yes. Oh, okay. Please call the roll. Mr. Malika? Yes. Mr. Moore? Now, I'm going to give you faith that the UFP parking spots and these neighbors aren't okay with it because I, me voting for this much of parking thing is against everything I believe in in life. So um, if something comes back, I'll kick myself in the rear first, but I'll vote yes. Yes, fans and granny, good luck. Thank you. I don't have a terrible one problem. Okay, both of them. Both of them. Okay. Okay. 6080 North Hamilton Road. My name is uh, Matt Dickin. I've been Okay, you sign your name on the roll sheet right there. Great. BDA 21 165. This is 6080 North Hamilton Road, located on the east side of North Hamilton Road, north of East Dublin Granville Road. This is within the Northland Community Council and zone CPD Commercial Plan Development District. The 1.25 acre site is currently undeveloped. The surrounding area is rapidly developing with commercial uses along the Hamilton Road corridor, including medical and shopping centers, hotels, corporate offices, drive through restaurants, and other commercial retail development. The applicant proposes to construct a 2700 square foot credit union with a drive through pillar. The variance is requested to exceed the maximum number of required parking spaces, providing 18 spaces rather than 14. Planning supports the proposal. The Northland development standards recommend landscaping around the perimeter of proposed developments, along with parking lot screening and tree trees. The Northland Development Standards also state that developments shall provide a death ring connection to the frontage sidewalk that is safe and convenient and recommend sidewalk and paths on both sides of commercial arterial roadways. Planning staff supports the revised site plan showing detailed landscaping and parking lot screening, a sidewalk along the North Hamilton Road frontage, and a pedestrian connection to the site and wider development and additional information on existing street trees. The Division of Traffic Management has no comment. The North Community Council recommends approval of this request. 
city departments can recommend approval with conditions as uh, the request requested development is compatible with the surrounding area and the division of traffic management has no issues so the conditions would be that the applicant shall commit to the landscaping and parking lot screening on the stamp site plan and that the applicant shall provide a sidewalk along the extent of north the north hamilton road frontage and a pedestrian connection to the site and fire development in consultation with the Department of Public Service. Okay, Mr. Dickin, are you in agreement with those conditions required by the city? Yes. Okay. Do you have anything else to say about this project? Um, I think it's relatively straightforward. I would like to thank Mr. Merritt and Mr. Freeze for um, being so flexible while we were uh, getting set up to uh, come here today. Um, really, really appreciate it while we were getting our um, uh, address and lots really worked out. Thank you. Is there anybody here to speak about this application? Um, please come forward, sir. State your name, whether you've been sworn. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Dave Ball. I chair the North Community County Development Committee, and yes, I have been sworn. Okay. Please go ahead with your testimony. Uh, very briefly, we met with Mr. Dickin on January 26th. Uh, yes. We met with Mr. Deckett to discuss this case on January 26th. The committee did vote unanimously 16 to 0 to recommend the approval of the application. So we are pleased with this project and happy to recommend its approval. Okay, thank you. Okay. We have no more questions. I'll call the question. Question has been called. Please call the roll. With conditions. With conditions. With conditions. Excuse me, sorry. Mr. Malaga. Yes. Mr. DeMora. Yes. Mr. Moore Bailey. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 2864 North High Street. Hello, Hi, Matt Goldberg. I've been sworn in. Okay. 167 at 2864 North High Street, located on the east side of North, North High Street, approximately 270 feet north of Poland Angie Street. This is within the Clintonville Area Commission and the zone C4 Marshall. The 0.31 acre site is developed with an existing 8,794 square foot commercial building. The building is comprised of retail space along the high street frontage. The existing use for the rear is automotive repair. Surrounding the site are predominantly commercial uses along the high street corridor. To the north, the property abuts dwellings in the Seaport Commercial District. To the east, the property is adjacent to single unit dwellings. The site is located within the boundaries of the high street urban commercial overlay. The applicant proposed to utilize the building for retail food service with no dining. Therefore, 3,896 square feet of the building previously utilized for automotive repair will need to be converted to retail space. A variance to reduce the required number of parking spaces will need that need to be updated. But uh, anyways, with uh, with the UCO, this comes out to be a reduction from 14 spaces to 10, and then they are also Requesting to reduce their driveway, landscaping, and numerate requirements to conform to existing conditions. Planning is in full support of this proposal. The Clintonville Neighborhood Plan states that parking reductions may be appropriate for higher density mixed use projects along High Street. Parking lots should not dominate the built environment, and those with which are visible from roadways should be screened with a minimum four foot high. Continuous wall, decorative fence, or hedge that reaches a minimum 75% capacity within five years. Additionally, street trees are recommended on all public and private streets as approved by the city forester. The revised site plan includes a relocated shade tree and bicycle racks to screen the parking lot from the roadway, as well as a new street tree along North High Street, consistent with plan and landscaping guidelines. Received elevations are also consistent with the Flintville Neighborhood Plan Design Guidelines. With the current width of the alley south of the site, 
The increased intensity of the proposed use has the potential for adverse traffic safety impacts at the intersection of this alley with North High Street due to the limited availability for vehicles to be able to turn from North High Street into the alley while that vehicle is queued within the alley waiting to turn to North High Street. However, the Division of Traffic Management can support this application subject to conditions to maintain a loading zone and widen the southern alley. Clintonville Area Commission recommends approval. The department recommend approval with those conditions from traffic management that I'll elaborate shortly. But we can recommend approval of the proposal as the development is compatible with the Clinton neighborhood, Clintonville neighborhood plan and its design guidelines. And concerns of the Division of Traffic Management are to be addressed by conditions that will be sorted out during the site compliance process to their satisfaction. And those conditions are that the applicant shall apply for and maintain a loading zone on North High Street, and the applicant shall widen the alley that comprises the southern front end of the site at its intersection with North High Street to a minimum pavement width of 24 feet. So the applicant is going to widen the alley? How does that how does that work? Uh, we do it all the time. I mean it's a the access requirement. So um I guess the, the existing use is not as intense uses of vehicles coming here now. So we would just make that requirement on the site plan. I guess you guys very rarely see it. It is a requirement. So this is a site plan. These are site plan. Yeah, we're not gonna commit you to the site plan. This is an example of about how it's going to turn out, but because this is still being the final site compliant plan is being sorted out with traffic, you're not committing to this site plan. You're committing, or they are committing to making these adjustments on the site. Yes. Okay. To the satisfaction of the department. So, how big that alley now? Is that sixteen nine? It's eighteen six. Eighteen. Eighteen. So eighteen nine. Eighteen nine. So is the widening to the south? Um, it will occur within the right way, but yeah, I think most of the lighting will probably have to be the south. There's like a catch basin to the north. Just that's the, kind of a I guess technical. I just don't see the right of way, I guess, here. Because if, if it is, it's right along the edge of the building, right from the building face on the, on the yeah. side. Yeah, I mean, it's the right of way. Yeah, yeah, go back to like, that picture. That's the area within the right away where the sidewalk thing is. That'd be applied to the aerial. Did you show the alley? Yeah. Oh, that's the alley right there. Yeah, so how can that? I mean, it looks, it does look like it's up against that building. That's what I was just wondering. It looks like the dimension between the two buildings are around 18 feet. Well, it's just at the intersection. Oh, that's so what you're, you're just wiping it. Oh, but the turn. Oh, that's that's got you. Fine. I wasn't clear on that. Thank you. Okay. Sir, I was. State your name again because I don't see. Um, Bennett Goldberg. I don't, do you have a, you're with who? I, I'm one of the owners of High Street Kitchens, LLC. I believe that's where the African of High Street Kitchens. Okay, because this says Joseph Baron Ronstein. That's my partner. Okay. Yeah. You're under oath, so we'll believe you. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say I can elaborate um, because I actually was uh, was just working on the updated site plan. And if you go back to the photo from the street, the new site plan actually gets to 24 feet just on the other side of the manhole, about one foot south towards us from the uh, power pole. So uh, we do have an updated site plan that will satisfy the 24 feet. Um, and the, the worry was really, you know, if cars are coming down that alley and turning on North High Street with the traffic. So, gotcha. Okay, so you're going, to, you're fine with both of those conditions. Yes, this might absolutely. Work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Care to speak to anything else on this project? One of the the important things. This will be our thirteenth facility, and um, one of the important things is is um, just like the earlier applicant with the uh, veterinary clinic. Mm -hmm. We have 22 kitchens here. Uh, each one's about 250 square feet. And these people are uh, completely staggered as to when they're coming in. We have caterers that come in two or three times a month. We have restaurants that, uh, you know, that are operating at different business hours. 
we have bakers that are in at you know bakery hours early in the morning. So um, we generally uh, are, are requiring parking variances for the exact same reason, which is most of our tenants are taking public transit. These are restaurant workers, dishwashers, bakers. We require to put these things in places where there's excellent public transit in this uh, this uh, location happens to be on North High Street, a very a very good one. So we also wanted to take advantage of the north. The northeast side of North of, of High Street, where there are a bunch of houses that are actually elevated. Most of the people are parking in the back. So we we did a number of traffic studies to identify that this was a great area for additional parking should we need it. So is there anybody here to speak about this project? Okay. Any questions for the applicant? I call the question. Question has been called. Let's call a roll. With the conditions. With the conditions. With the conditions. Well, right Do we have to say that every time if we get them to commit to the conditions? We should, yeah. Okay. That's my understanding. Mr. Malaka? Yes. Mr. Orm? Yes. Mr. Bailey? Yes. Spears Granite Globe Project. Thank you, everybody. Okay, 1600 Hanson Avenue. Hello. Uh, my name is LZ Kirkman. I sworn in and my wife Susan Kirkman who didn't want to. Okay, that's fine. You can come sign, up here and talk to us. You can sign the um roll there. We'll hear from the city, then we'll come back to you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sixteen hundred Hanson Avenue is located on the north side of Hanson Avenue, approximately eight hundred and ninety feet west of Dresden Street. Served by the North Linden Area Commission and is a limited residential. The site is the last undeveloped parcel in a residential development in the 1990s, made up of single unit dwellings. It is located along a curved section of the road which loops around the entire neighborhood and it backs up against two wooded residential lots to the north. The applicant proposes to construct a single unit dwelling. The variance is to reduce the rear yard area from 25% of the lot to 20%. Neither the North Linden Plan Amendment nor C2P2 address yard area reduction. However, the large front and side yard, as well as significant numbers of trees in the rear of the property, mitigate the 5% rear yard reduction. Planning Division staff note and are in support of perimeter landscaping and street trees to be and a street tree to be included and encourage coordination with the city forest during the tree placement. North Linden Dairy Commission recommended approval and city departments can recommend approval. Staff note the unique shape of the lot and the comparable size of the dwelling being proposed. In addition, the rear yard reduction is mitigated by a large front and side yard as well as trees in the rear of the property. Conditions. Made it easy for us. Okay, sir. Uh, do you have anything to add to this application? Uh, no, I, I, I don't. I don't think. Okay. Do we have any questions for you? Is there anybody here that wants to speak about this application? No problem. I'll call a question. Questions being called. Please call the roll. Mr. Malika? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Stranding, good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. 5979 East Main Street. I'm Jeff Lunchar with the CESO agent on behalf of the applicant. You've been sworn in? I have. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. 5979 East Main Street is located at the southwest corner of East Main Street and McNaughton Road, served by the Far East Area Commission and C4 Commercial. 
The 0.71 acre site is developed with a restaurant and associated parking located just east of I-270. Surrounding uses include a neighborhood shopping center made up of two parcels controlled by the same owner to the south and west. More restaurants to the north across East Main and a gas station and shopping center to the east. The MPN proposed to redevelop the site with a new restaurant of the same brand and a new parking arrangement. Variances are to allow a dumpster to be located within the building setback, 10 feet from the East Main, and to reduce the building setback along uh, Main Street from 60 feet to 40. This is a long one. The Bar East Land Use Plan includes an area specific policy that notes that CCO standards should be used for areas designated mixed use on the recommended land use map. As is the case with this site, C2P2 states that parking lots, including drive through windows and coverings, should be placed to the rear side of a building, be hidden from view to the greatest extent possible, and screened from the public right of way and adjacent development. Screening should include a combination of the following items. Walls, mounds, trees, shrubs, uh, or landscaping. Staff notes on site revisions, including the removal of existing parking spaces uh, between the building and Main Street, a reduced vehicle circulation lane with um, between the building and the Main Street frontage to include additional landscaping. Shown here between this main uh, the building, Let's see, as well as additional landscaping along the Notton Road shown here. So there's extensive landscaping being proposed that generally consistent with C2P2, although staff continue to encourage the McNaughton front to be revised to move the building closer to the corner with the Eastern Road Road parking relocated westward away from the road case for greater consistently Consistency with CC, CCO standards, staff acknowledge additional landscaping and screening as in the spirit of these standards and will not condition support on these provisions. Staff also continue to encourage consultation with ODOT on the placement of street trees and pedestrian facilities on the main street, but again, will not condition support on these provisions. Staff are also supportive of the building elevations as consistent with C2P2. The Far East Area Commission recommended approval and staff can recommend conditional approval. Although moving the building closer to the corner of Main Street in McNaughton would ensure greater consistency with CCO standards, staff acknowledge the extensive landscaping along Main Street and McNaughton, including on site trees, shrubs, bushes, and the preservation of existing trees, which are generally consistent with CTP2 and hiding parking lots to the greatest extent possible. Additionally, the building locations are consistent with C2P2. Chair. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Longford. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, first off, well, thanks for this. I know you're trying to kind of get this across the finish line to make this meeting. Um, we did try to provide additional landscaping along the frontage uh, to the extent we've seen here. Uh, we're still developing those plans, and obviously we'll continue to do so to maintain that report at the next stage. But we feel this layout, given parking kind of in the eastern side, is the best with the drive-through flow and the counterclockwise direction. So you heard staff's comments about trying to relocate parking to the west side, and with the drive-through, it just gets really funky and doesn't really work to the best of the ability of the site. Given it's such a small site, um, we feel that this is uh, the best compromise. Given what would work for us from a site level perspective, is also the additional landscaping along each frontage. So, so you're shifting the orientation of that building. Yeah, so it's a little bit. It's definitely larger. It's yeah. 6,600 square feet. This one's about 3,600 square feet, but it's definitely a little rectangular. Yeah. The other one is mm -hmm. just kind of a massive square. Okay. Is anybody here to speak about this application? Do we have any questions for this applicant? Well, question. Question being called, please call the roll. So I'm here with the condition, and I will bring the site plan up um, in a moment. Thank you. Great. Thank you. 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 Thank
forgot to ask you about the conditions. The stamp site plan. You have, this is the one that you're comfortable with the stamping as final. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Roll we'll call with the condition. Mr. Malik. Yes. Mr. Demora. Yes. Mr. Palmer. Yes. James Brown. Thank you. 118 South Yale Avenue. Bill Washburn and I have been. ZA 21-174 at 118 South Yale Avenue, located on the east side of Yale Avenue at the terminus of West State Street within the Franklin Sanitary Commission in the, in the M Manufacturing District. The subject site is zoned M Manufacturing and is currently developed with the Furniture Bank of Ohio, a furniture thrift store. Surrounding uses include a rail line to the east, Manufacturing uses to the north and south in single unit dwellings uh, to the west. The site contains two buildings, the first an 11,700 square foot warehouse that includes a wood shop for the sole production and repurposing of wood furniture, including bed frames, dressers, dining tables, coffee tables, and end tables, and the storage of furniture. The second is a 6,620 square foot building used for offices. The applicant proposes to construct a 52,800 square foot warehouse to the north of the existing buildings so they may relocate the wood shop production area and use the rest of the warehouse for storage. The existing offices will remain and the previous wood shop will now be used as a showroom. The increased building square footage and New uses requires 50 total parking spaces. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the provided number of parking spaces to 40. Because other wood and paper products are considered more objectionable, the use must be located no closer than 600 feet to any residentially zoned property. The parcels to the west are zoned R2 residential, and therefore the applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the separation requirement of a more objectionable use to a residentially zoned district from 600 feet to 50 feet. And uh, Jamie stressed uh, that all of the woodworking is done inside. So it's contained within buildings. It's not happening outside. Planning is generally supportive of this request, but requests additional information in the form of building elevations. Provide data provided all that and an updated site plan. Okay. That's not the most recent. And a detailed landscape plan. Uh, staff requests additional street trees in consultation with the city forester and landscaping along Yale Avenue, where new construction is proposed to buffer the proposed use from adjacent, adjacent lower density residential uses. Presence of on street parking, mixed use nature of the area along with pedestrian, bicycle, and transit accessibility aligned with C2, P2, basis for parking reduction requests, and staff request bicycle parking to align with those guidelines, which I'll see. Yeah. The Division of Traffic Management has no comments. The Franklin Tent Area Commission recommends approval of this request. Uh, city staff can recommend approval with the condition. Uh, the applicant has submitted elevations and a landscape plan that are consistent with P2P2 and the West Franklin plan design guidelines. Further staff can support the distance separation distance as 100% of the operation is considered for objectionable to occur indoors and have no adverse effects on the nearby residential properties. Staff can also support the 10 space parking production if there is ample street parking and the parking lot will be used as a de facto loading zone. That condition would be that they commit to the stamp landscaping plan. Okay. Mr. Washburn, you commit to the um, stamp landscape plan? Yes, I just submitted them back. Um, do you want to speak? Yeah, I'd just like to, you know, 
bring up about the woodshed. We've been in existence uh, in that location for 15 years. The operation of the woodshed has been in existence for over 11 years, uh, producing needed furniture for community members who are low income. Um, the type of furniture and the type of equipment we're using is obvious level woodworking equipment. Um, this is not high level manufacturing. This is the same type of equipment that any person would have in that garage um, and, and is being run at predominantly by volunteers on a weekday basis. And you don't think that you need to pull 50 spaces? We do not. History is shown with you. We do not. We have 12 uh, staff on site okay. and uh, rarely have more than about 15 volunteers um, at any given time. So we do believe that we will be able to use our the proposed amount. And if we do ever exceed that, there's sufficient uh, on street parking to accommodate. Anybody here to speak about this application? Okay. Are we ready to call the question with the condition? I'll call the question with the condition. Thanks. Mr. Laura. Yes. Mr. Okay. Yes. Eric Homer Bailey. Yes. Here's the granny. Good luck. Thank you, Sam. I'll have that advice for you. Is it the same? Very good. Okay. 333 West 6th Avenue. My name is Jared Herschel. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've been sworn in. One dash one seven seven at three thirty three West Sixth Avenue, located on the south side of West Sixth Avenue, approximately forty feet east Pennsylvania Avenue. This is within the University Area Commission, zoned R four residential. The site is developed with a single unit dwelling with a one thousand and eighty square foot single story detached garage in a residential neighborhood. The applicant proposes to add a second story to the base of the existing garage to match the pitch and of the dwelling and request variances to increase the area devoted to a garage from 720 square feet to 1,080 square feet and to increase the height from 15 feet to 26 feet. Uh, technical variances are also required to conform the side yard and maneuvering as they exist on site currently. Planning is generally supportive of the request, but requests additional materials in the form of scaled and dimension site plan, floor plans, and all four elevations noting material selections. The University District Plan recommends that new housing be compatible with nearby housing in terms of height, width, building materials, porches, roof pitch, setbacks, and windows, and door size width and spacing, and that accessory building be located to the rear of the principal building. And also states that a minimum of 20% of the total lot area should be preserved as landscaped open space behind the principal structure. As the garage is located to the rear of the home off of an alley, planning is generally supportive of an updated garage structure. What's those documents listed earlier? The Division of Traffic Management has no comments. The University Area Commission recommends approval of this request. Staff can recommend approval as the garage will be located in the rear of the lot. The applicant has submitted elevations that are consistent with the University District Plan design guidelines in terms of height with building material for each setback. And we would recommend a condition that the applicant commit to stamp site plan and elevations. Happy answering your question. Okay, Mr. Herschel, you are agreeing to the site plan as the final and ready to be stamped? Yes. Um, could, do you like to speak to anything else about the application? Well, I'm basically just putting on a roof on my garage. And this of the four variances, basically the three are existing. It's basically just the height variance. I'm just trying to legitimize the idea. And it's basically just going to be dry storage. And it's still going to be a single story garage. It's basically going to have area and added space above it. 
and had it fixed for five years. So not full, not full five years. It's 26 Any questions? Do we have anybody here that wants to speak about this application? Yeah, I don't have any other questions. Please. Uh, I'll call the question with the condition of the stamp site. Plan stamp site plan. Question has been called. Please call the roll. Mr. Malaka. Yes. Mr. Navarro. Yes. Mayor Palmer yes. Bailey. Yes. James Granite. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Back to number 12. 612, 614 East 2nd Avenue. Right, 612 and 614 East 2nd Avenue is located at the northwest corner of East 2nd Avenue and North 9th Street. It's within the Milo Grove Area Commission that zoned R4 Residential District. The corner lot is developed with a two unit dwelling and includes a fenced in rear yard. Surrounding uses include single unit dwellings to the west and south and two unit dwellings in the east and north. The applicant proposes to split the lot and construct a new three unit dwelling on the corner of East 2nd Avenue. In North 9th Street, the variances are to reduce the vision clearance, reduce the lot width for lot B, to reduce the lot area for lot B, to reduce the building setback for lot A, to reduce the minimum side yard for lot B, to reduce the rear yard for lot B, to reduce the parking path setback for lot B, and to reduce the number of parking spaces. Planning supports the request after additional information was added for the building elevations, materials, and landscaping. The new construction is consistent with C2P2 design guidelines. Staff encouraged an additional tree to be planted on site to mitigate the removal of the church trees at the corner of East 2nd and North 9th, but will not condition support on this revision. The parking reduction is supported due to the walkable nature of the neighborhood on street parking and proximity to transit and bicycle infrastructure which align with C2P2 considerations for parking reductions. The Division of Traffic Management has reviewed, has reviewed the revised site planning to support the request, and the Milo Grogan Area Commission recommends disapproval of this request. City Department, City Department recommendation can be for approval with the conditions that the applicant shall commit to the stamp site plan and building elevations. And I'm happy to answer any questions. So my question is, maybe this is Brandon, the clear vision triangle. There seems to be nothing in the clear vision. I was our staff comments. We said we would support minor variants, but it seems like you draw out the full 10 by 10 parking space probably doesn't encroach, but we didn't have a site plan that drawn out. That was our staff comments in the okay. so the the where are you saying there's a there's a driveway, you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. So is there is that a space right there on the end? No, that's not a parking space. Okay. That's the parking space right there. Yeah. Right there. Okay, so that little area right there. Yep. Okay. Like it's good to sit up there. Probably didn't it probably doesn't take off anything if you update the plan. They're varying it down to eight. I guess you see the apartment thing doesn't extend. So the, the triangle is drawn. Oh, it's back from the street, but back from this. What? So what we're saying is it, it, they probably could take the variance off. We don't have an issue with it, but. Yeah. Oh, that's a setback right there. Gotcha. Okay. I was trying to come and call. Okay, state your name again, sir, for the record and whether you've been sworn. Oh, uh, Ryan being wearing yes, I've been sworn. And um, you can go ahead and speak to the project and 
address why you got a disapproval from it. So last last time we came, sorry. Um you guys asked owner who I'm representing to go back to their commission meeting and update the site plans. Feedback we got was we had changed them prior to the last area commission. So we, pro we provided them, we got their feedback on essentially the disapproval of the current triplex. And so we just shared with them exactly, hey, we're looking to build this. The only thing we can really build here at this time would be the current construction cost is the triplex to keep it in the affordable rate range. Otherwise, if we build a duplex, it has to go with market rent. Um, so that was kind of the feedback. We had conversations about it, but um, as you see, we're still in the current disapproval. So just want to bring it to the area, uh, to the zoning commission to get us a final vote and decide if um, we can build anything at this point in time. Okay, well, um, there's a lot of audience members here, so I will open up the floor to whoever wants to come and speak about this application. It, everybody can have a chance, so. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Hi. State the name, what you've been sworn in. Uh, Dwayne McCoy, and yes, I've been sworn in. Mm -hmm. I am a uh, resident. I live on like second, uh, just a couple of houses down from this. Sorry, to get the mic closer to you. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I live on uh, second, 582 East second. And um, so I have a list of concerns that current or not in the particular order. Sorry, people are there. Yeah. I heard all you can move the speaker closer to you. Okay. So I have a, a list of concerns. That are not in any particular order, so maybe they could be addressed. One, I love the fact that the investor is investing in my broken story neighborhood, mm -hmm. and I'd like to see the investment happening there. I also like the fact that they're investing in the quality of life of the residents and the people who would be moving into this uh, triplex. Um, what I'm concerned about is how they're defining the quality of life. And so here's my list of concerns uh, the condensed living of residents. On Second Avenue and the parking that is available there, there's not trash containment containment that's by there. And um, in the current state, trash is out of control in the alley. So I have some photos here. This should take it a few days ago. Like when you pull into that into that area off the alley of night, there's just so much trash there because it's currently being ran as a BMD Airbnb. So that's one of my concerns. So help me understand. The trash is not being picked up by the city. Trash. Yeah, so on the right there is 9th Avenue and there's an alley that goes behind it. Yeah, right there, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious how they're going to handle trash containment. When you say trash containment. Is, are these the pictures? I'm sorry, I know Charles, uh, you provided these. When you say trash containment, I mean, you're saying that the so trash the, is not being yeah, so Currently, the investor owns the house right next to this property that's run into Airbnb. So it's a high volume of in and out traffic. And the, and the alley is just piled up with trash. That is not the. Yeah. So that's an Airbnb right there. Where the fence is was what is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Behind that, the alley view is proposed three parking spots. So I'm wondering where's all this trash going to go because they can't even contain it in the current state. I guess I'm I'm, I'm I hear you, sir, but I'm trying to understand. So you're saying this more trash pictures? than they have. I have pictures just taken from it and yeah, with, it with all the trash. So you're saying that the, there's more trash in the receptacle. Yes. Okay. So that can be cured, right? With additional the cables. Oh, so that's current state. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is the investor investing in the community at the end now. So my concern is. What kind of investment are we going to get in the future state? Okay. 
I invite you to drive by it tonight and look at it. The um, other concern I have is right there on that corner there, uh, the bus stops. Children are picked up, children are dropped off. So reducing the visibility only creates more chaos and danger for kids. On the street, no doubt. Right there, yep. Okay. That is a bus pick up and drop off. And kids wait on the bus on both sides of the, of the street there. I'm also very concerned about reducing the yard space from 25% to 6%. And I'm wondering what the quality of life is going to be like if we're really focused on investing in residents. Or are we focused on short term Airbnb rentals? And then I'm also concerned about sidewalks, but that might be in the scope of this conversation. Am I correct that you need a license to do Airbnbs? Yes, that is correct. Now, does everybody get on my can answer that? The answer is no, they don't. <laughs> there is a high volume of traffic in that alley. I can't predict, I can't project what's going on. Let's just say there's traffic all the time. Copy it in and out, in and out, in and out. Of the alley, not specifically this house, just the alley. Um, I'm talking about the current state better breakfast. So I'm trying to paint the current state of what we're living in versus further investment in condensed living, what we're going to get. That's all for me. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah. Next person. Hello. Hello, please send my name is Yvette Russell. Have you been sworn in? Yes, I've been sworn in. Okay. Please go ahead. Need the address down here. Your name, as long as I can read your name up here. Thank you. So I live directly across the street from this building. Okay. I live at 628, I own 628, 632nd Avenue. Okay. And um, I bought the property 16 years ago. When I bought the property, I knew I wouldn't have bought that property if I thought apartments was gonna come along uh, right there in that area. It's a very dangerous area. Um, where they wanna put this apartment, it's at least, one to two maybe accidents a week, right there in that area. Um, so it's gonna be even worse for the kids getting on and off the bus in that area. It's gonna make it a little bit too much more congested. congested. Um, the back of it, uh, they're proposing three parking spots and two for the neighbors next door, which I don't see how that's gonna happen because um, next door to that is a triplex, is a duplex. So if you got a duplex, they're gonna need more than two parking spots. And if you got the tri triplex, it's gonna be how many bedrooms for each unit. So if you got two or three people living in there, then that's gonna it's gonna make it very congested in that area. And then it seems like for me looking at the diagram, it's getting ready to move our street, Ninth Avenue, smaller. Uh, not as wide, which that's a very dangerous street. Everybody off, they already fly up and down that street anyway. Now, is there street parking anywhere around? Um, no. Now, next, I park directly on the side of my property. Like on the 9th Street Valley? Yep, on 9th Street. Um, on my, me sitting here where that blue square is, my place is on the right. Okay. So where that red line is at, that's where I park, right there on that side. Okay. Um, it's already dangerous, just like two lanes of traffic going back and forth down that street. Uh, like I said, the main thing with me is that the kids, there's a lot of kids getting on and off the bus right there. Uh, they have been for years, like I said, I've been there for 16 years. And um, it just, I think it's just, the, uh, I think it's just making it more dangerous. 
for them to be out there. Mm -hmm. um, I think it also lowered the value of my property. Now, are the properties in and around this area, are they duplexes? Are they single homes? Uh, single homes, single homes, and some, um, some uh, duplexes, uh, doubles. Which, like, next to that one where they want to put the triplex, that's a double. That's a, when you go to the front page of it, that's a, that's a double. Mm -hmm. And they rent it out Airbnb. Um, now, that's mine right there. That's my double right there. I own that. Mm -hmm. um, then the back of that unit, if you're putting parking back there, how I see it on the diagram, there's no room for the trash receptacles that belong back there. Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely don't want them piled up behind my property. Because um, mm -hmm. it's, it's just gonna make more trash, you know, and it's like, like uh, the other gentleman was saying, the trash issue right now is, is really out of control. Um, I guess the person who's running the Airbnb is not taking care of that area, so it's already bad. Uh, and we were hoping that we were going to get sidewalks down along North Avenue for the kids to walk when they're coming up to catch the bus. Because they're walking all the way from Fifth Avenue. Where, to, is, where is North Avenue? Fifth Avenue. Oh, okay. They're walking from Fifth Avenue all the way up to the corner of Second and Ninth. Mm -hmm. So we need sidewalks over there in that area. You break your three minutes. Okay. Wrap up your comments. You good, ma'am? I still had a couple more things. Um, if you want to list them off, yeah, finish the list without giving the comment here. Okay. We can. Well, I'm, I'm going to pass it, but then my last thing I want to say the last thing I really want to do is look out my window and see apartments. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Next person. If we could, have, I'd like to have the area commission first. Of course, if that's okay. Mr. Committee. Yes. You have not this one in. Okay, let me see. Raise your right hand. He probably said the test one to get tonight. Be the truth enough of the truth. Please say I do. Okay. Go ahead, ma'am. State your name. My name is Deborah Patron, and I'm in Can you pull the mic a little bit closer to you? I'm Deborah Patron, and I'm a member of the Milo Urban Area Commission. Okay. I object for some reasons. Okay. I'm going to keep it simple since you have some minutes for me. Um, there are children in the neighborhood. Reduction of space would be detrimental to me. Uh, the garbage, of course, has been addressed, but um, also the, the the, the danger to the children would be the visibility. And uh, once again, as the uh, previous owners had mentioned, we don't have a sidewalk on the side. Um, parking spaces, they, they claim that they're going to be three bedroom apartments or uh, units, and um, they're allotted only one parking space. Um, in our neighborhood, there's always more than one, one car per unit. That um, we're already uh, we're already compromised with regards to parking. Um, finally, the Airbnb uh, that they're operating has been a sore spot in our neighborhood for some time, um, and that is criminal activity. Um, I can't imagine. It's hard to trust a situation when someone says they're going to have affordable affordable units. But they can't keep up with their what they have. How can I trust that kind of rhetoric when there's no there's no way to guarantee it? And, um, and uh and all the other things they have. So Mayor, what was the vote of the commission? Uh well, you... the, it was unanimously we voted yeah. against it. You know, and how many people
says they're asking to reduce the setback under 0.21 on lot A, but to reduce the, the rear yard under 0.27 is for lot B. So those are not those two things are not connected. But I'm getting trust to be okay. 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 So I'm again representing, I'm gonna read off their um, their statements. Um so as to the parking reduction being supported due to the walkable nature of the community and on street parking and the location to transit, 98% of the residents in that block of this site has two plus cars again, including the new neighbors and the new built homes who just moved, uh, moved over there. Um, the on street parking is already congested. Um, no one in that area catches that bus, even though it's close to transit. Normally, that those bus stops are used by people catching a bus into the neighborhood and working at um, one of the locations inside. Um, everybody's consensus is that this would have a negative effect on our community. Um, it's going to be a triplex in the middle of single family homeowners. Um, yeah. Tell me about these new build homes that you referenced. Where are they at the location to this? They are directly across the street and they are. They are directly opposite across. It's the south side and it's between nine and Cleveland on the south side. Okay. And yeah. they're when you say new, how new? Um, the neighbor who just but he's in one of those neighborhoods. He just became our neighbor. The name of this boat? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's a single family. They're all single family. Oh, those are single family. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so that with it being a major corridor of a community, Second Avenue, Fifth Avenue, those are major corridors of our community, and have that oh, right there. Yes. Okay. So see everybody is and all single family. Okay. So having a triplex there, they feel what okay. completely out of character for it. Okay. So that, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Come on, ma'am. Anybody else coming in late that needs to get sworn in? You, sir? Yes. Okay, I'll have you raise your hand as well. Sure. Raise your hand. Yeah. Do you promise that the testimony you give tonight the truth and nothing but the truth? Please state I do. I do. Thank you. Okay, state your name, please, ma'am. David McDaniel. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just really have like a 60 second commentary. Okay. Um, this just, uh, Mr. DeMora, who may be of some age like us. And we have considerable amount of elderly people in our neighborhood that we just want to. Well, I'm sorry, maybe not. I should have put you I'm 55 years, years old. Oh yeah, my God. Like okay. <laughs> I know I'm all headed up because of Ohio State football. I live in my house. Um, I'm 52, so I was born there. There are certain things that we like in our neighborhood. Any neighborhood can be better. But we just don't appreciate someone coming in saying, oh, we're going to do this, this, and this without um, any uh, expectations or our feelings. We've seen what happened to the residents in the short north area because we had, some of us had to walk to Everett to go to school, and we know what it used to be like. We know who used to own those homes, and we know that some of those people ended up in shelters. We do not want that for our Milo community. We welcome our new neighbors. We know that everything is evolving and changing. We're in the 2000s. I get it. Computers are everywhere. But just because you have you have a home and what you want and you're a home and you're upcoming, that doesn't mean that your ideas should come into our neighborhood without um, us gelling and coming together. Thank you. Thank you. Thought you were hair dye or something. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, that's great. Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Angela Sutton, and I'm thinking back to what she's saying. You were sworn in earlier, man. I was. Okay. But um, I also want to mention too, um, these people again, they're investors. They have nothing ventured, and we live there. We love our community. Um, it's a close knit <clears throat> by them being investors. You're putting people in here who I don't know. I mean, I can't say what they're doing, but they're not managing current the current um, the establishment right next to them. So who's to say they're going to properly manage this? So this would be a headache that we as the commission, we as the neighbors have to come together and put back together again. Again, there's a lot of single family units and we embrace that. There are a lot of owners. So if they're not owners living in this property, what are they gaining by this? There's some money, but you know, so that's, that's all I want to say. Next. I want one of your shirts. Sorry. I said I want I like that shirt. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Robert Milner. I've been sworn in. As you see, there are at least nine of us here. There would be more if it would, didn't have to be at work. As evidenced by our presence and our comments, you've heard that we are vehemently opposed to the village request. Having read the application, a question which I'm paraphrasing said, would there be adverse impact on the community? The answer is yes. The commission provided a forum for the builder to negotiate changes. None were provided. What does that tell you? I surmised that him continue to present his case. He knew that we would not challenge it. We are here. We trust that you will do the right thing through this matter for our community. Thank you. Next person. Hi guys, how many of you are on the commission? Right there in the room. Five, six of you? Nine. Are on the on, on the commission that oh, so that's I want to say that as many years as I've been on this board, I've never seen nine people on the same commission come up for any zoning, whether they're for it or against it. Um, we have our Northland committee in here, he's here all the time, but he's always here himself. He's not the entire board, he's not here with zoning requests. So I I, I want to say that this is the first for me to have most of the area commission show up about about a zoning matter. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, my name is Tom. Okay. My name is Charles Tompkins. I am the chair. Um, I know when this when this afternoon started out that it started out with everybody talking about the European meetings and you said what you said, which we all understand that. Uh, one of the purposes of why everyone is talking about that is because of the way that they've been treated by the original. Home, home. Same ones that own those properties are the same ones that he's speaking for. Last time you had the meeting, I was here, and you all did ask him if he could get the owners to come to the commission meeting for representation so they can answer questions. They chose not to. So when they chose not to come, they told us in the community that they did not care about what we was dealing with already. That they didn't care about what was going to happen to the community if this triplex was to be built. The reason you see so many commissioners here, the only reason you don't see a room full of other neighbors and stuff, because we told them that this was enough right here, where you would have probably 50 or 60 people here, right? Because it's a real major concern. The parking, the variances for the uh, decreasing of the property, the parking is just unacceptable. If you build this triplex there, you like they said, you're you're asking for three families to be put in. These are three bedroom dwellings. 
The location on that corner of 9th and 2nd Avenue, we are less than maybe five miles, less than six miles away from campus. The proposal is to maybe have some students living in where you can actually rent out each room to a student, which will put three students to each room, which will have nine people. Most students, they drive. So when you take that into accountability and stuff, that's more parking than we can ever. Second Avenue, you have houses on the uh, north side and the south side. Some houses do have parking in the back. 90% of them don't. They park on Second Avenue, the south side of the street. They're real respectful to each other. They leave parking for each other. If you add more parking to that, it's just going to cause more problems. One statement that was made to us at our last commission meeting when we were talking to Mr. Ryan, and we asked him about the uh, owners of the uh, properties, how come they didn't come to the commission meeting? He said he don't know he asked them to come to. He also made a statement to us and said that he don't know what they're going to do. They could turn it into another establishment, short-term rent, for all he knows. So, it, it is a major concern, and I know we were to talk about all the parents, but we voted. We went to the site, looked at everything. We looked at everything, the setbacks and everything. There's no other place in my local program that's like that. No other place. And that is just not something we want in my local program. We're trying to keep it as, as historical as we possibly can. It's the community. How many blocks is it? Eight blocks in any direction. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, sir, send your name for the record, please. James Mick. Okay. Um, I live at 601 East Second Avenue. It's across the street and three doors down the house, so own and rent uh, the house across the street, uh, 600 East Second Avenue. Uh, I've lived there eight or seven years. Um, I used to rent in uh, Pine Village for 13 years uh, on Summit, so I understand what parking is like uh, and how it can change uh, when a neighborhood develops. I understand their intent. Um, I will say the main variance that I'm, uh, I understand a lot of those variances are about them trying to figure out how do we get the most out of our space. Uh, legit, uh, if you look at the elevations uh, that I had of what they're going to do, there's not even a back door on their units. So when we talk about quality of life, uh, I'm curious as to how this, to me, this is worse than what I saw living on Ohio State campus off campus units. Um, so they're going to have to walk around the unit to even get to the front door. Uh, but the other thing that wasn't, I didn't hear get mentioned is that on Second Avenue, uh, there's only parking on one side of the street. So you not only, in most streets, you have parking on two different sides. We don't even have that. And it's already, uh, in the past year, I've seen two accidents from that intersection because what happens is when they turn off Cleveland, there's no stopping until they get to single layer, which is a half mile stretch. It's 35 miles an hour, and there's no enforcement, and people floor it through there. So I had one car literally went up on the yard of lot A, proposed the lot A was proposed and destroyed the railing. So um, visibility is my other concern, although there's already a fence blocking, so I can't realistically be as big that, but the parking is, you know. I've, I've lived where every room I've rented, like when I had roommates, we all had a car. And to, to have a two unit with only two spots for lot A and then three for three unit just reinforces the fact that it's unrealistic. And since all these homes, I'm the first older home next to all the new ones on the south side of the street, and parking's already gotten worse. And I don't, I don't want it to see to become what. But my neighbors like the short north. Yeah. Yes, I watched the time village get packed, and you know, it's 
cumbersome when then your parking becomes another problem. It's just something we just um, that's it. Thank you. And I echo Anybody else? Last opportunity as we turn it back over to the applicant. No one can again raise your hand and say anything else. Make sure. So, then coming back, I don't know if you want to hear from us or do you want to just launch and be your rebuttal system that you. We had the same conversation, and a couple of things I do want to clarify. I did say that the plans are to do affordable. Events. I mean, these can't get the owners to do affordable, but that's the approach. Is why. Yeah, we can't. We can't commit. The... We tried to apply online. Yeah. Yes, I remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we tried it. I was great. It was, yeah. it was all static, and then the city attorney said we couldn't do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and to be honest, um, we have, I have I have a lot of frank contenders with the vacant lot with trash and same kind of concerns specifically at our property and on it and working with the neighbors and trying to figure out how to get rid of it and we're on top of it but it doesn't matter people just drop stuff there um so the idea is to like any vacant lot is to develop it to clean that up but also uh, but let me clarify this lot is not vacant the the lot next to the one with your lot but vacant, you're asking for to split the lot right, right but yeah. this is not technically vacant Right, but there's tr trash developments, listening to us typically, at least in mine, in mine specifically. So let's not mix the projects. Let's yeah. talk about this one. Um, and then so to build anything here in current con construction, uh, the only way to do affordable housing is is a triplex. You can't do a duplex today. It's current labor construction material. Well, I'd say it has to be market rent. To do a single family would be building out new ones that were they showed earlier that are four hundred, you know, three four hundred thousand dollar homes. Um, and that goes for the top dollar amount of urban. And the feedback we got was we don't want to see our property taxes go up. Well, we agree with that to provide affordable housing. Um, and as a current landlord for the HUD housing, they do both. I have two duplex with three ones on each side, and they both have one. The families that are fantastic, they use transportation. Now, striving parks are just a little different uh, as far as bus and all. So we're taking that experience and saying, hey, we're going to do this in Franklin and I. Offered to do it for someone else to try to put more housing in the in the city for the growing population. Um, yes, I think that's where the, there's, a, there's a disconnect is trying to use what works in one neighborhood mm -hmm. to another. Okay. And what it sounds like for this neighborhood is that they don't have triplexes. Um, they don't use their public transportation like other neighborhoods have used. I mean, we've heard from the people that live there. So while your experience may be valid for other properties that that may work in the city, and I do appreciate you trying to do the affordable housing, but you got to do what works in the neighborhood. And I'm inclined to say this, this is not a vacant lot, and so there's not a need for you, there to be anything done. This is an opportunity for the owner to do, make more money, but at the detriment of the rest of the community. And so what have we gained in comparison to what we've lost? Um, to me, the parking is not reasonable. You're going to go from a duplex on the lot to five residences on a lot. That's at least 10 spaces. And you've got five. Um, it just the, the people have said that there's there's not capacity to lower parking. It would be different if there was on street parking, but it seems like there's not. Is that second um, avenue? There's parking there. So then you'd be talking about that alley or I guess that's ninth which parking is on one side of the street. So one side of second or something. One side of second. One side of second, sorry. No parking. No, no, no ninth. I just don't I don't see this as being a feasible feasible um, reason for us to abandon the standards that are in the code. 
Open to others. Thoughts? I mean, obviously, if you know from the last meeting, I was ecstatic when you said we were going to make it affordable and you were okay yeah. with that because I'm all for affordable housing. Mm -hmm. And I, obviously, I was the one that brought up, you know, where is the hardship here for the last time? And I brought this up for every case like this, trying to split lots to make extra profit when there's you can sell the lot as it is without these variances and still make a profit on the lot, but, but someone wants to make more of a profit. And so I've been, I voted no, I think every time this board, I think they'll all say that I voted no on all these. And so I'm not, I was, you know, I'm not going to change that vote. And obviously, like I said, I appreciate what you tried to do with, with us last time. I really do. And if we could do something like that, I might change my mind, but we can't. We're not allowed to. Again, as a parking guy, you know, they're, they're paying me to vote for that thing up for the church, but there's nothing up there during the weekend. And I pretty much justify, in this case, I live in a tiny village. There is no place to park. There's never a place to park. And I sympathize with these folks. And again, going from five, I have a five places with have multiple bedrooms and going to have one car for each, each of those. It is unreasonable. It just doesn't work. And, you know, again, the two things that I personally voted no on this board are here in front of me at the same time. And for me to vote yes would be me like we the team up north next year. So I just don't see that occurring. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Yeah, and again, one of the things I, I started looking at as well was, you know, the site plan set, you know, talking about the uh, the building length being 70 feet. And I, if I look at the elevation, the side elevation specifically, it says the side elevation 70 feet and the porch is beyond that. So if that's correct, the porch would be inside the vision triangle. So there's one issue I think I see. Plus, those side elevations aren't drawn correctly. They're about two thirds the size of the chimney. Proportionally, if you look at a 35 foot height for this thing, that elevation should be, again, another inch longer than what we're seeing here. So I think there's a deception here as far as what I'm even looking at. Um, so that's two points that I'm just concerned about that I don't think are, there's not accurate information here that we can be. Justify because I think right now it's over the vision. Track. So you're suggesting that the porch on the front goes beyond the vision. Um, so what you're saying in the elevations are saying they're 70 feet long and the porch is beyond the 70 feet. Your site plan says the site, the build is 70 feet long. So it has to show up somewhere. And again, I'm I think you look at number two. Those side elevations are sh are drawn even short though. Height of the building is shown at 35 feet. You lay that up at side, that thing is at least again, probably a third short of the length of that building. That means that facade, those facades you're seeing will be very blank. I don't know what we can window wise and things like that again. So I'm just saying that. That doesn't lend me to feel comfortable that I'm seeing accurate information. Once we just in that 35 can't put two of those side by side and gets maybe longer than what you're showing at 70. Quite a bit long, yeah. So, do you have anything else to say before we take a vote? I do. I'll call the question. Question to call, please call the roll. Mr. Malafi? No. Mr. DeMora? No. Mr. No. The answer is denied. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that concludes our calendar meeting. Have a good evening. <laughs> we, we do have a couple of notes. Uh, Bill can start, I guess. Oh, not on the record. Yeah, like he's moving on to But it's rough. It'd be easy as the same department. I'm working on the phone. Michael is also moving on to Washington. Yes. 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 Yes
Also, I've left this already. <laughs> I am now council activities and residential, which just fits a little bit more in line with what I'm doing. I'll probably be at the next couple of meetings because I'm helping as we fill it. Okay. So we have all new staff that with Jamie. Jamie and Walla Walla. Walla. Yep. So. Are you doing wine and Walla Walla? There are, there are a few of them. There are lots of fun. I'll be in next month. Wow. Yeah, so 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 the, the new owner guy. Yeah. 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 What I do is and the director of felony is leaving and he'll tell you exactly number of hours you have left on the job. I know they have been.